Bonjour. Uh, today we're going to talk about the indirect object pronoun. So be ready with a pen and your questions at the end of this session if you have any. Okay, so what is an indirect object pronoun? Uh, it replaces a noun. Usually it's a person. And when I say usually, it's really most of the time, 95, 97% of the time, it's going to be a person that is linked to the verb by a preposition. Now remember, the prepositions are, that are following verbs are usually de, a, and pour. Here it's going to be mainly a, which is to, okay, in English. And it answers the question a qui. You know, remember that the, some, the COD, the uh, direct object pronoun was quoi or qui. Here it's mainly to whom, a qui, okay. So uh, let's move on and read, uh, let's read the following text um, and try to see maybe if you can identify the indirect object pronouns here. So, aux dernières vacances, je suis partie en immersion totale dans une famille belge très sympa. Comme cadeau, je leur ai acheté un livre de photos magnifiques sur Bangkok. Ils ont beaucoup apprécié. J'ai aussi donné à Luc, mon correspondant, une paire de gants de boxe taille. Il les a trouvés fantastiques. Avant mon départ, ils m'ont offert un livre de recettes belges et des BD. Luc nous a téléphoné récemment et nous a dit qu'il viendrait nous rendre visite à Bangkok. Ce serait trop cool il m'a dit qu'il m'écrirait bientôt un email pour confirmer les dates avec moi. Je lui ai répondu que lorsqu'il m'aura confirmé sa venue, on lui proposera une liste d'activités et de lieux à visiter pour qu'il puisse choisir. Ok, so I'm going to give you 10 seconds here, not long, to try and spot some of these to whom uh, pronouns, ok Okay, so I know it's a bit short. If you want more time, you can always pause the um, video. But we're going to look at, at them. Okay, so it's just discovering a little bit to start with. Okay, je leur ai acheté un livre is one of those uh, indirect object pronouns. Mon offert, the M apostrophe, nous, nous ici as well. And another one, ma, M apostrophe, M apostrophe again. Lui, M apostrophe, lui. Okay. Sorry, going back a little bit. So one thing that you have to be very careful of, I'm hoping that you can see this, is that um, basically this here is not a uh, um, indirect object pronoun. It is a direct object pronoun because il a trouvé quoi fantastique. It's not a qui, but quoi. What did he found that was really amazing? It was the gloves, okay? So this is a COD that refers to this, d'accord? So that's a, the little trick here to, to make sure that we understand the difference between the direct object pronoun, which is what or who, and the indirect object pronoun, which is mainly to whom, okay? As you can see, all of these that I have highlighted are people, person, okay? So let's have a look at the, some of the translations from this text. Je leur ai acheté un livre, I bought them a book. Ils m'ont offert un livre, they bought me a book. Luc nous a téléphoné, Luc called us. Il nous a dit, he told us. Now, I just want to stop here for a couple of seconds because a lot of students, when they see that nous here, tend to conjugate the verb in the nous form, okay? Because it's next to the verb and that's why it's so confusing. Okay, so you have to be very careful here. The, ver the subject is here. The subject of the verb is here. It's not... Nous, and that's quite confusing, okay? Uh, Qu'il viendrait nous rendre visite, again, now he would visit us. Now, il m'a dit qu'il m'écrirait, he told me, okay, that he would write. Now, in English, we can omit to me, but in French, we can't. We have to have it. So, this is an option in English, not in French. Je lui ai répondu, I answered him. Um, que lorsqu'il m'aura confirmé, that he, when he has confirmed it to me, because... We know in the context of the text that it's between that conversation between him and me, him and I, that it don't, you don't have to maybe say that uh, in English, but in French you must, okay? And on lui proposera une liste d'activités. We will suggest a list of activities to him because it's in English we would say, oh, it's, it's kind of obvious, it's underlying, okay? But in French you have to use lui, to him, okay? So be careful. In English, it's not compulsory. In French, we never omit it. Okay, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Ah, so what are the uh, COI pronouns? I'm sorry, indirect object pronouns. 
Right. In French, as I said, they replaced the preposition a plus someone. Okay, so a plus him, a plus uh, her, a plus us, you, me, myself, okay, or you. Okay, so as you can see for I, it's going to be me, for you, te, for him or her. That's really interesting that for once, we do not uh, differentiate between him and her. This is a, a really uh, easy mistake to make. A lot of students write elle. Okay, but for once, we do not have to change our gender here. Nous and vous stay the same. And le doesn't change in the plural or in the um, feminine or uh, masculine form. It stays the same. So it's kind of simple. So if you look at uh, some of the examples I've got here. Um, so if you look at simple tenses, okay, before the verb, we, can, we put it before the verbs. Okay, he tells me that il me dit que dit is the verb and, he placed, and me is placed before the verb. If you look at the compound tenses like perfect tense or pluperfect or past conditional, uh, he called you, il t'a appelé. It's just before the auxiliary. He gave her, il lui a offert. See that her is lui, not elle. Okay, so be careful here. I wrote you a letter, je vous ai écrit une lettre. It's just before the auxiliary. Now, if you look at negative sentences in blue, it's after the ne. Elle ne lui a pas offert. Il ne nous rend pas visite. Okay? Imperative sentences in black, it's after the verb. Donne leur un cadeau. So, and for infinitive sentences, it's before. Je lui ai demandé de lui écrire une lettre. D'accord? So, as you can see, for most um, occurrences, it's going to be before the verb. Okay? Uh, in here as well. The only one that's a little bit different is the imperative sentence where it's before. It's after the verb. Sorry. Okay? Uh, so be be very careful here. That's it's a, it's a, it's a kind of recurring thing. Okay, let's moving on. Okay, so now you know that French I gave you. Well, I I be students anyway. I gave you a list of verbs that use the preposition a or the preposition de. Now I strongly advise you to know at least that list of verb because they are the, the most common verbs that use a um, indirect object pronoun. Uh, when you want to simplify a sentence, okay? So I'll give you some examples here. Tu ressembles à ta mère. So if you want to replace à ta mère, oui, je lui ressemble. Remember, feminine is still lui, okay? So to look like, to call, to say or to tell, to ask questions, to ask for an explanation, to give someone something, to lend someone something, to send someone something. So you see, in English, you've got that someone, to call someone, to say something to someone, to tell someone, to ask questions to someone. That two tells you that in French you're going to have that a plus a person, or in the uh, when you simplify the, the, the sentences, it will be uh, an indirect object pronoun. Okay, so let's move on to the next uh, slide. So if you want to pause now, please pause and, and make some notes by all means. All right. Now, because we have seen recently the direct object pronoun, it becomes really complicated. And I'm not going to dedicate this lesson to this, but I just want you to understand that the order in the sentence is going to be really important. Okay? So as you can see, I've highlighted in red the uh, indirect object pronoun. Okay? So there are usually, a lot of them are going to be before the direct object pronouns, which are le, la, and le, but for the third uh, person, either plural or uh, singular, it's going to be after. So I just want to keep that in mind. I will have a special lesson on that uh, soon, but I just want to make sure that you're not getting confused because it, it can be quite tricky. Okay. So now it's time for you to practice. So uh, take your book and uh, complete this activity in your book. Pause the video now and we'll mark it together in a minute. Okay, so just pause now. Okay, so hopefully you have Finish the activity in your book and you can now mark it with me. So, le prof a-t-il donné un contrôle aux élèves? Oui, il leur a donné un contrôle aux élèves. Is plural, so it's leur. Okay? Il a donné un contrôle à qui? Aux élèves. A-t-il donné aux élèves? A-t-il dit aux élèves de réviser avant le contrôle? Non, il ne leur a pas dit de réviser avant le contrôle. A-t-il dit à qui? Okay? So again, aux élèves. Les élèves ont-ils dit au prof que le contrôle était trop difficile? Oui, ils lui ont dit que le contrôle était trop difficile, lui being the teacher. Pendant la pandémie, on a donné des devoirs aux élèves Non, on ne leur a pas donné de devoirs. Look carefully here at the negative form. 
Tu as prêté mes livres à ta copine Non, je n'ai pas prêté tes livres à ma copine. And on vous a demandé de venir à l'école pendant la pandémie Non, on ne nous a pas demandé de venir à l'école pendant la pandémie. As-tu envoyé tes devoirs à la prof Non, je ne lui ai pas envoyé mes devoirs. A-t-elle posé des questions à la prof après avoir étudié cette leçon Oui, elle lui a posé des questions après avoir étudié cette leçon. So as you can see, there are some CODs here as well that I could have simplified, but I didn't want to over, overload this activity, okay? So hopefully that was helpful. I'm putting here some of the references that I've used to create this lesson. So Le Baobab Bleu, Fleu Nantes, and a long grammar, grammar workbook, where you can find more exercises actually to uh, complete. And also you can find some online activities at Lola's French and Le Fleu on un clic as well where you can just uh, do an activity online. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, please get back to your teacher. Merci, au revoir.